Um, as with any takeover, obviously there's always loads of questions about the ins and outs of how the breakdown of the sale of the club and all that kind of stuff goes. But one thing Charlton fans have been discussing is the valley, the training ground and how, how the sale um, works with that. Um, can you confirm yeah, that yeah, it course. is lock, stock and barrel? Yeah, so effectively it is lock, stock and barrel. However, uh, from my initial call uh, to, to Roland's representatives, which was at the end, end of August to completion, 2nd of January, you know, for us, the main priority was getting in for the January window. So it's a two-stage transaction uh, where we've, we've purchased the club and the stadium uh, and we have a, a commitment uh, to, to, to purchase the rest of the assets uh, over a period of time. That in mind, obviously, you've mentioned that it was important to, to get this done before the January transfer window. We're in that now. We're a few days in. Um, what are the plans for the next month? Oh, well, listen, we need to strengthen. We need, we need more bodies in, you know, Andre Green coming in, um, very happy with that. Um, he's one that we looked at in the summer. Uh, financially, we couldn't get to where, 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 where Aston Villa were. Um, we were look, lucky, lucky, lucky enough now to be able to, uh, to have got that over the line. Uh, he did well yesterday. Um, you know, we got a few offers out for other players. Um, but yeah, it's just... The January window is a funny one, um, you know, prices are inflated, obviously given who's behind the takeover, uh, quotations get, get inflated as well when, when, you know, Steve's putting the call in, you know, inquiring about players, you know, a couple of zeros go on the end. Um, but yeah, no, listen, everyone's working around the clock to, to uh, bring players in. Yes. You know, but as you said, you know, we need to increase revenues before we can increase costs. It's sustainable, it's sensible, and, and that, that's all we can do to try and move the business forward. Transfer deadline day. Four hours sleep last night. I'm on my way to the training ground now. A little competition. I want to know who you think the next player, Charlton Athletic, is going to sign this deadline day. The winner gets two free tickets to tomorrow's game. Retweet it, like it, share it, comment below. to give my money to the people to rip this money. The club guys, and they take all the money for them to leave a nice bread, to get a Range Rovers, and to use the money for the pitches. You should, you should ask Matt Southwell. Guys, he cheat you, he take all the money which I put in the club, and it has been gone for his lifestyle.
I look at this and go, I don't like what's coming out of this chairman's mouth. Whether whether he is a paid employee of Charlton Athletic or whether he is a controlling influence, the finances behind the acquisition of Charlton are with the majority shareholder, I suspect. The idea that this guy hasn't put any money in, if this club's been bought from Roland de Chatelet for the best part of 50 million quid, someone has written checks out, and I'm willing to wager it isn't Matt Southall. Um, you know, I don't want to steer into the narrative for my predilection to dislike football agents, but that's his background. And most football agents get in between the wall and the wallpaper and certainly don't get their hands anywhere near their pockets. And the idea that this was being washed out in the public domain and some of the internal wrangles that are clearly a difference of opinion, clearly a difference of outlook, clearly a difference of positioning. What you've got is somebody probably, although this guy, uh, Nimir, has got a background, a significant background, that understands the sporting environment as well, because if you look at his resume, this is not a fool. This is not somebody that doesn't understand the value of money and understand the meaning of it. But I, I, you look at it from the top down and say, there's a cultural thing here. Football is a very different culture than any other business. And you walk in the door and Planet Football operates in a way that sometimes makes your, 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 your jaw drop when you start to see how people think they can operate, what they think they can and can't say. This resignation from a director's position is incidental. Mm -hmm. If he's the majority shareholder, he's the controlling influence behind this business. This chairman is employed by this football club, will be drawing a salary from this football club. And I suspect despite the fact that he might have some validity in some of his points of view, I'm not entirely sure that some of the things he's saying he should be saying are right. in the well-being of the football club going forward. Now, the idea that this guy hasn't proved up his source of income is slightly different from the fact that he doesn't have the money in the first place. Steve Dell at Berry, which of course is the, the red light that everyone will flash to, didn't prove up his income and subsequently took a club nowhere near... Uh, anything vaguely resembling disaster, i.e. he took them to oblivion. Mm -hmm. This guy's written checks out, from what I can gather, to buy a football club via whatever mechanism for 50 million quid. So clearly he's got the means. Dale at Berry didn't have any means, didn't buy any football club, just assumed debt, and then ran the football club into the ground because he didn't want to put his hand anywhere near his pocket. The dynamics of what's going on here concerns me because I don't like the narrative, I don't like what's being said. You know, defamation. If you don't like what someone's doing in a football club, you're well within your right as a majority shareholder to turn around to him and say, I don't like what you're doing, I don't like what you're saying, I don't like what you represent. That's not defamation. That's called opinion. That's called an, an objective. Now, none of us are close enough to it, mm. but my overriding top-down view is Charlton as an entity are not in jeopardy. There's an ugly, unseemly battle with personality clashes going on, and the resignation may well be simply this guy taking himself off the construct of the of the limited company that owns Charlton or the vehicle that was set in place to own Charlton and perhaps he'll put someone else in there as a proxy that will weight the board to his favour. But I, I read it, Natalie, and it, it, it just smacks to me of somebody that's got an opportunity via other people's money that is singing the song of bringing the club back and reuniting it with its fans and spinning a, a, a yarn about what's, what's, what clubs are entitled to. At the same time, I read some of his statements earlier on in which we're not going to spend a lot of money on players. We're not going to be signing this. We're not going to be signing that. We're going to organically build this club up. Now the narrative is... We haven't spent any money. The lies that have been said. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of inconsistencies. And the fact that this guy's buying, buying Dinamo Bucharest, what the hell's that got to do the price of cheese? The fact that the Pozzos own Udinese and Enoch, once upon a time, that Tottenham owned a series of other football clubs, that's got nothing to do with it. In fact, if you own other football clubs, it shows your commitment to the sport and it might bring in a series of relationships that advance the football club. The problem at Charlton, here's the problem at Charlton, they're going to get relegated unless they pull their finger out. The new owner, Tahun Nimer, um, and Matt Southall, the chairman, have fallen out something terrible. A series of accusations by the owner about the way his money is being spent by Mr Southall, including one saying they'd bought a Range Rover um, just off, uh, out of his money. Um, obviously, um, he, he's come back and said, Matt Southall, the chairman, that uh, Mr T Nimer has put no money into the club, having bought it so recently. There's been accusations of... Um, uh, resignations and people's being saying that they're, they're, they've left their job. Now that's all come down. All a lot of these tweets have been taken down. So has the club website changed and down disastrously for a club that has been a, a running joke um, because of its ownership for the past five years. They thought they'd got.
past that with the new owner and they seem to be out of the frying pan into another complete fire. Mm, interesting. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's watched this space, I think, in the case of Charlton mm. Athletic. What I don't, what I will say, as always in these cases, um, when there's only uh, when owners and uh, the, the administrators start to act, act crazy, um, it's the fans I always feel sorry for. Um, you know, they they've got Charlton no doubt tattooed on their forearms, and they're buying the, the shirts and all the gear and all the rest of it, um, and they're in their their hearts and their emotions, and these people are just using their football club as a toy, and I can't stand it. Well, it's incredibly sad. Incredibly sad, Jim. Shocked, disappointed. You know, we, we felt, certainly as, as a club, that once Du Chatelet had left, that things were going in the right direction. You know, Lee Bo, you got a new contract. Um, the plan then was to try and stay in the championship, stabilise in the championship. But certainly we, we felt that, um, that things were going in the right direction. It doesn't seem to be the case now. This all seems to centre, Matt, on this man, Tanun Nimer. Um as far as I gather, still not having put money into the football club. This seems to be the, the, the tipping point and he and Matt Southall have, have fallen out as a result. Somehow, for the sake of the club, the sake of the fans, they've somehow got to find a way, Matt, of falling back in with each other. Without question. Without question. I mean, you know, the future of the club is, is, is at stake, isn't it? Um, you know, if there's, there's no investment into the club, uh, then obviously that's a, a major problem. Um, the, the club needs to try and stay in the championship and, and obviously results of late haven't been good enough. So the most important thing is that things are settled off the field um, so that things can be settled on the field. Um, and at the moment, there's, there's obviously that isn't the case and there's, there's a bit of a war taking place behind the scenes. I hear, Matt, that executive chairman Matt Southall is prepared to meet it head-on in terms of meeting the fans. He's meeting with the, the members of the Charlton Supporters Trust today. So at least he's trying to keep the fans in the loop. Yeah, well, yes, he, he certainly, you know, the time that he's been at the football club, I think he's been very open um, and, and seemed to be, you know, putting himself out there so that the fans can see what's going on behind the scenes. Um, so that's that's important that he's you know he's willing to do that um, because obviously the, the most important people in all this are the people that, that work at the football club and the supporters you know the, the fans are, are the, the lifeblood of, of any football club uh, and, and at Charlton it's absolutely no different so they have to be at the foremost of the club's thoughts right now. Matt, you've been there. You 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 played at the highest level with Charlton. We're talking about a great club with a great history, aren't we? It's a brilliant football club, a really friendly football club um, with the community at heart. You know, the, the amount of community work that, that Charlton does and is, is fantastic. Um, it's got a great history. Obviously, we had some fantastic times in the Premier League, um, not being quite the same um, for, for a, a fair few seasons. But, you know, promotion and, and getting into the championship was a massive high. Uh, this season, you know, started well as, as dipped. Of course, we, we, we've seen that results haven't been quite good enough of late. Um, but it, it is an amazing football club, and, and the supporters are, are very much at the heart of that. Those statements uh, and the statement you've just read out—they're not easy statements to put out at a time like this when the club uh, requires the backing of the fans and the players. But unfortunately, uh, Mr. Name has been left with no alternative. Why has why he been left with no alternative, Chris? This stems to the fact of Mr Southall refusing auditors to have access to the club's accounts. And there are some very serious questions that Mr Southall is going to have to answer. 
uh, in relation to how the club has been run since the takeover and in relation to a number of various questions all concerning the finance. You would think that it would be straightforward uh, to uh, allow the auditors to have a look at the accounts and you would think it also be, would be straightforward to answer some very simple questions. But unfortunately, that's not the case. And we're having to go down this route through no fault of our own or no fault of the fans, but due to the fact that Mr. Southall is simply refusing to cooperate. At one stage, was there complete harmony between the two when the takeover actually took place? I think you'd have to say that that would have been the, the case, yes. Uh, they wouldn't have gone into the situation on, on, on anything other than there being some form of a clear uh, agreement as to how they're going to proceed. But unfortunately, um, obviously, once that has, the takeover has taken place and Mr Southall's gone in, in his role as chairman, um, it's been quickly found out that there are some serious issues that need to be addressed and answered. It's my understanding that the Southall side of this, their party would argue that Neymar, your client, has not put in the money he said he would put in since the takeover. Yeah, it's slightly misleading, you see, because the takeovers are, are, are quite naturally by themselves quite complex. Uh, and it was never suggested at all at any stage that money will be put in, in in February or March. That simply isn't the case. Um, what is the case is that the firm financial backing has been given and will continue to be given, and investment will be made when that is required and, and needs to be put in, not on the whim of Mr Southall. What hope can you give Charlton fans this lunchtime? Honestly, I mean, Chris, they've gone from pillar to post on this. All they want is stability, someone who has the club at heart. Is your man that man? I, I can guarantee that's the reason why he purchased the club in the first place. And nobody at all would want to be in this position, and especially at this time of the season, with a team facing some challenges. Um, it's not Mr Neymar's intention at all to be in this situation. He's been put in it by the actions of an individual, and those actions need to be looked at. Can you categorically assure Charlton fans this lunchtime, Chris, that your client... Tanun Neymar has the appropriate funds to run Charlton. And those funds have been proven to the English Football League. So proof of funds is there. That's all in place. And you would talk. You 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 can talk for your client. He has the financial clout and wherewithal to run Charlton to be a force again at the top of English football. Jim, that was the basis of the, the takeover in the first place and, and that was the basis of submissions to the English Football League. So nothing's changed from that at all. Uh, and the, the desire is to uh, ensure that Charlton goes from strength to strength. It's most unfortunate that Charlton currently is being dragged into this position by Mr Southall's press releases and statements on the media. For me, it's a shambles. And because you left this, but you left Charlton really because the takeover was taking I, I so left long. Because there was there was talk of two different takeovers happening, and I heard one takeover didn't want me. They were probably the right ones. Yeah. Um, and the other one was was Umar and Aram that I got another contract. Then obviously, if they, if they stayed, there would have been a rolling contract. A lot of people looked at the different things. My family, I've got a young family, so my daughter's growing up, so I want to be closer to home. I was commuting to Charlton, right? And it was just a mess. Um, and the. <laughs> The Charlton fans are unbelievable. They're so, I think most football fans in this country are so passionate. Yeah, they are. Um, and we have that right across the country. Or we have the best fans, we have this, we have that. But they really are. And what they've been through 30-odd years ago, going back to the Valley and what they did to get their football club back, they felt a bit of an onus and, and, and like they, they sort of really relate to the place. And Bo was a good friend. Jack was a great friend as well. They took two of them good friends. And one of my best mates is Stephen Gallon, died at the football. Not... I tried to ring him the last four to 48 hours to try and find out what's going on. They both blanked me, so I don't think they're as good a mate as what I thought. <laughs> but I knew they were in a transfer embargo in January and they weren't allowed to say nothing. I knew anything they brought in, it had to be spent but like, with X, X amount of percentage less. Now, I just think what football fans do deserve at whatever level that is, at the top level or going down our game, is some sort of understanding of the truth of yeah. what goes on behind the scenes. Because it's hard for you to come on air and talk about all the if, buts and maybes and me as a manager talking about all the rights and wrongs. But unless we know the complete truth, and the fans deserve that because we, we, we they put so much money into the football club. And you don't feel they're getting that at the moment? Well, they obviously haven't because yeah. if they've now come out of the transfer embargo, it's a bit late because we're two months from it finishing. Yeah. So yeah. obviously it was happened two months previous. Yeah. And I looked at where Charlton were and I was, I was wondering why. And I don't... 
I wonder why they didn't do more with that transfer window. But well, it's clearly the obvious now. Yeah. Stephen Gann and Bo, they got criticised for not bringing in players. Well, there was a reason, and they just showed you what good men they are. That they kept their own dignity and self-respect. They didn't hang anybody out to dry. Yeah. They just dealt with the negative results and, and did it in a very professional manner. I hope, I really do hope it's solved soon because it, it, it is a great place and I'm sure the South, the South East of London, they deserve Charlton to be to be around and to be all too competitive and still in the Championship next season. Yeah, but yeah. it can't really help, can it? They're two points off safety at the moment and all this turmoil can't help the players. And the players, the players and the coaches, it must be really, it must be very difficult for them. It must be and, and they play Hull away I think at the weekend and I think it's QPR at home after that. So if you look at sort of like from my point of view, I'm sure Bo, I know Bo really well, he's just an unbelievable guy, he's a, he's a winner. And I think he will utilise this going forward in a short period of time as a driver behind mm. trying to gain some sort of results and a bit more momentum. They have Lyle Taylor, which gives them the greatest opportunity to win games. Uh, I just hope, I really do hope, and I know, I know some of the other managers in the round that who, who are like as well, but Charlton's a club that I love my opportunity and everyone gave me the chance to leave and it was right for my family. So I, I do wish them well and just get this sorted. Come out, be honest with the fans as much as you possibly can, legally, uh, and do what's right by by the football club in general. Him, it's almost like him and him and the, the chairman, Matt Southall, it's almost like they're having a, a spat over the, the breakfast table mm. about who owns what. It, it, it's really weird. And for it to be played out in public is, is a real problem for me, but also a problem for the EFL. Mm. Because, you know, if you listen to what's coming out about, you know, the majority shareholder not really... Uh, 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 having the assets to be able to fund the club, that's what's come out as well. How they've seemed to have ticked the boxes um, that, that allow uh, the owner to, to be the owner is beyond me. After we were made aware of the transfer embargo in January, we asked several times for all the finance documents that we never had. And then it came to us all the evidence regarding the missing of the fund on the life in the exotic lifestyle of Matt and his friend, Lee Amos. Range Rover, they buy a Range Rover by 600000 Bound, they rented credit cards, apartments, all of this without approval or even informing the board of Charlton. So you're saying that Mr. Southall has been using club funds for car, for hotel, for travel expenses? Exactly. How worried are you about this? To be honest, when you know, when you run the club, it's supposed to be the male, most priority for you it's to look after the club running the club you know today unacceptable and prove that mr matt is not the right person to be the chairman of the charlton by the way because the most priority for him is his lifestyle not the club so, so he misused the club for his lifestyle up until yesterday Matt Southall said he had no intention of resigning. What do you think of that? Actually, as we are a major shareholder, it's impossible to have any trust in Matt Southall after he has abused that trust and act in a manner that he has cost the club a lot of money and has signed a document commitment the club financially without our consent. So you are still insisting that Matt Southall resigns immediately? I want to give him the opportunity to leave so we can start, you know, repairing the damage he made, to be honest, as soon as possible. Until he resigns, will you refuse to invest in Charlton? Exactly. You, will, you should give your money in the right hand to invest in the club, not in the lifestyle. 
But will you invest in Charlton if he is there? Um, if he's there, for sure, no. H have you put money into Charlton so far? Actually, we had a deal with the AFL. This is a problem because, you know, as a new investor coming from the Middle East, okay, so we have the EFL, they have all the evidence that we have the funds, it has been blocked for Charlton. Only the issue with the EFL that they want to know from where we get this money, the source of this money, which we prove it already. They have all the license of the company, they have all the bank details, blah, blah, all of them had been submitted to the EFL. There is some misusing information which we submit to the old lawyer and he did not inform the EFL about this information or he did not submit it to them. I noticed you were at Dinamo Bucharest at the weekend. Are, are, you, are you keen to get involved there? I'm fully committed to Charlton Athletic, to be honest, and I'm seeking to get promoted to the Premier League. Bucharest is entirely separate. It's nothing to do with Dinamo. Right, okay. So th it's only Charlton that you're interested in? That's it. Charlton is the first priority for me. I take it you have no intention of walking away at this stage? I will never walk away from Charlton. I will never ever. What we promise the people, we do air with our promise. Tanun, I can tell you that this morning, Mr. Southall has been told that he retains the full backing of the club and the board. So the board and the club are backing Matt Southall. Actually, this is right now in the hand of the lawyer. They will take the care of this. This information made only by Mr. Matt, by the way. None of the staff has confirmed there. No one of them. I'm sure 100 person. And I have all the support of them. So you claim you have the support of the board? 100 person. And one of the things will going to be exclusive for you. I received an email last night from Jonathan Heller, which he say he is the Bender's director. It means he's not one of the director of East Investments. And I think you are aware about the Excel sheet. It has been leaking from the club. I don't know how. And it's come to us and the fund where all the money goes. If you are a chairman of the club, how you charge the club a service charge plus your salary? Can you tell us what's happened tonight, please? Do you have a message for the Charlton fans? What's the future of their club? Are you still part of this club, Matt? Have you a message for Tanoon?